Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my take on Gary Vee's views on how to run a successful YouTube channel. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Don't let your ego get in the way. Got an interesting one that I thought would be a good theme for everybody. We need to ask more. I get so many emails and DMs from so many of you of like how, the answer is ask more. How do you get brand deals? Email every brand on earth. <laughs> I mean this, I'm, you know, I know some of you have seen like me talk about like Instagram DM, like I'm getting 50 emails, 50 emails a week from people that same basic title, doing the Instagram DM changed my life. A stunning thing happens when you ask. Somebody says yes. So I think one of the biggest things that is happening in this room when I think about it is that people's egos are getting in their way. The feelings of getting hurt when somebody says no hurts your ego so much that it stops you from even asking in the first place. It is stunning to me how much I like when people say no. I prefer when people say no. I tend to bounce into different industries in my career because once I become big in one and it becomes easy to say yes, I hate it. So, there's a lot of fancy people in here who think they're bigger than they actually are. <laughs> and so I highly recommend that you check your ego at the door because it's the substantial aspect that's holding you back from your next chapter. So please, please, please start asking more. More DM, more email, and 5149. When you're reaching out to somebody that you want something from, it's a, a good idea to start with what you're gonna do for them. I'm aware that you want a $100,000 sneaker deal. I get it. The f is in it for the sneaker, right? So be, don't take for granted subscribers or comments. Be thoughtful, understand what they're about, pay attention, do your homework, listen, pay attention to what they're doing on social. 30 minutes of homework can articulate a far better way to have a conversation with somebody that you want something from. Rule number two, be religious about your audience. I want to know what most people's vulnerability is? I. The reason I always win every time I enter something else, it's what can I do for you? And not the person that has 11 million, just the person that's right next to me because karma and doing the right thing and kindness and being a human always wins in the end. Always. It does. It does because, because what you don't know is the person next to you may have 48 subscribers but his aunt runs <laughs> And everybody here is jockeying and overthinking and politicking in their head all from a selfish place and all the magic sitting in the doing the right thing, saying hello, being patient, but most of all, the thing that will speed you up in the thing that you want to accomplish, no question, is you've got to become religious about your audience. Like you have to become religious about your audience. Like, Guys, honestly, straight up, if you're sitting in the crowd right now, it's unacceptable for you not to reply to the comments you get on your content. I don't know how, honestly, like, like I'm just gonna go that literal with it. I don't like to do definitives things because that's just not how life is, but I'm just comfortable going there. It is actually fundamentally grossly negligent and unacceptable for you to be in a place where you do not reply with a thank you or a heart or a meaningful, you read it and you meaningfully wrote something back to every single comment you have right now in whatever limited that is because those seven people are disproportionately the reason you're gonna get 17. And yet you're so worried about getting the next 10 that don't know you, you're giving no love to the seven that decided to watch your horse. Also, if you wanna have more confidence, check out my 254 series, they're free. The links to join are in the description below. In a success world, please understand that success is happiness, not net dollars in. The reason people aren't patient is they value other people's opinions too much. My ability to only be comfortable in massive chaos has been my biggest asset as an entrepreneur. Like, I would never take a note. Like, that scares the out of me what these three people are doing right now. Rule number three, don't take your audience for granted. So many people are so caught up in width, and Ilya did a good job and understood depth. Like, there's so many people that have so many more followers than me, and their book comes out, and they sell a thousand copies. Or 
when they're the headliner of a conference, half the people show up that is expected because of how many followers they have, which doesn't allow them to command the price they want for speaking. Or when they make merch, because Logan and Jake are making a lot, they sell a lot less. Depth is massively important and the number one issue in this room is the way you're taking your audience for granted. The amount of you that I audited yesterday that have never replied to a comment in YouTube or Instagram is baffling and utterly disappointing. Right on is right. Preach it, brother. It's real. <laughs> you know, because at some level, you know, it's one thing if you want fame or the perception of fame and that gets you off and like, great, do it. Then you should be about the numbers. But so many of you here want to pay your college debt off or live the life that you want or make generational wealth that your grandkids have it. It's going to be about the depth. Dude's got 400 subscriber made $250,000. Now maybe what he was selling or have you, it's different, I get it, but that needs to be something that people wrap their head around. I'm just stunned. Like every day, every day I get comments from people like I can't believe you reply or how much time you put into your audience and every single time I get that, I say to myself, I can't believe how much you guys don't. Rule number four, understand distribution. So boom, 100,000. Now you clearly didn't say this to me the other day and now I'm putting the pieces together. You have been historically fascinated by this ad arbitrage, this ad sense thing. Yeah. I, listen, I would tell you that me and AJ early on were fascinated by Google AdWords and, and ad sense and the arbitrage. So you naturally went into understanding distribution, right? You figured out what your creative was, which is, which is by the way, brilliant because you never in your lifetime, and you're a young dude, will ever be able to cut open every item on earth. No. Which is why Wine Library TV was very successful. And this is the lesson for everybody. When you create something, try to create something that you'll never achieve doing all of it. Too many people start channels or concepts or creatives that after four videos it's over because you can't do anything else. Wine Library TV was amazing because I could never taste every wine. Forever. You have no chance of ever cutting. So once you got your creative down, you really got super smart around distribution. As a matter of fact, as everybody knows, I asked you, on, you know, once I picked up on that, I emailed you a couple days ago and said, hey, can you stay for an extra hour and talk to Andy and the team? Love to pick up on some of your nuances. And we're, we know what we're doing, but YouTube has never been historically the place I went quadruple deep down on. And I've, so you really became not only this creative powerhouse, but you've become quite strong at the distribution of content I, within the ecosystem. Yeah. And rule number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is focus on originality instead of growth hacking. It's funny, I just spoke to a bunch of the creators on an off the record combo where Casey uh, Neistat was uh, interviewing me and it was like, the, it's I the, spoke at the same thing. Great, so you know who was in there, right? <laughs> yeah. So the big thing I, I told them that really broke through and a bunch of them hit me up who had not known who I was, especially the younger crew. Yeah. I told them like, hey, you're becoming a creature of the algorithm. Yeah. I'm like, you, you all know the videos that are gonna work. You can bang those out, you already know. I'm like, you're gonna become unhappy, plus yeah. you've evolved. Yeah. Like when you were 16 to 19, especially the youngsters, right? Like right now, I'm pretty locked in. Like 35 to 43 yeah. is like, there's some edge work. But 15 to 22, there's foundational work of who you're gonna be. Some of these kids start off as Make up this, yeah. and now they like don't even want. To, they want no makeup. They think totally. it's clean makeup. Like, and like, I was really pushing them, and this really resonated. I'd love to get your thought on this. This is why I'm setting it up yeah. as a question. <laughs> I said, make a video that you know won't work, mm -hmm. that isn't made for the algorithm and the growth, but that you just actually want to make. Yeah. And some of them have, and it really did well, and mm -hmm. they're really happy. And if I felt like I made a little bit of a difference, it's, it's starting to be a drum. I'm starting to beat more. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, because I think it is, is not as formula driven as people want to believe it. The there's a comfort in that, and I think, in a way. And like, those people that have success and rely on those formulas, there's certain things about those formulas that are allowing them to express certain parts of themselves that really resonate with people, whatever. But like, I, I actually think it, they, you get to a point where you're like, well, I have to keep doing that thing to be able to succeed. Mr. Mr. So many people have just broken that rule over and over again. Mr. Beast is creative above and beyond yeah. just the fact that he's great at thumbnails. Are interested in, right? Do you see a lot of people who are incredible at the thumbnail and title sh but once the people walk in the door, the actual content because they're not passionate or talented is so garbage that they, even though they're good at growth hacking, also fail? Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time actually because the, like, the way that just 
I like that. And in a way, the way that the YouTube algorithm is designed is around retention and like watch time, right? It's about right. Like length of engagement. So if people are coming and they're bailing, you're never gonna be able to survive and the end. just getting served up. The end. Know? Yeah. I mean, it, wor- it worked, it used to work back in the day. Yeah, no, I know. Things have, t- have changed a lot since then. Because, you know, G- YouTube cares about its end user. Yeah, of course. Now I have a special bonus clip from Gary on how to do collaborations that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, how can you get better distribution for your videos? Number two, what new original idea can you bring to life on your channel? And number three, how can you be more religious about your audience? And if you like this video and promise to take action after watching it, we don't just watch videos, we do something. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments below and then get to work. I thought this would bring a lot of people value. There's so many of you that hear patience and then you just think, okay, let me just continue to make shows and content. And you're gonna wake up four years later going from 85 subscribers to 219 and I don't wanna be on the hook for wasting your time. You have to understand, and I talk about this a lot, and you guys hear it from me a lot, actually, a lot of the homies that are sitting out there, distribution. Distribution is the game. And so what you do when you have 85 uh, you know, people following your channel, or 200, or even 2,000, or even 20,000, or even 200,000, um, is you need to understand that you need to keep hustling for your awareness. Of course, and just so everybody knows this, of course your show has to be good. You have to continue to make your craft strong, you have to continue to be interesting, you have to continue to bring value and produce good content, but you need people to know about it. And so I think one reason I've always done well is I understood that. And so one of the great ways to do that is collaborations. I think if you've got a YouTube channel, you need to basically reach out to, I don't know, the other 7,000 people that are in your genre and reach out to them and see if you can bring them value, right? Horace, you love UFC, you decide to start a channel, you need to reach out to the 40,000 UFC channels and be like, hey, you know, I'm in the network, so I go to gyms, I can get you original content, can you put me on your show to bring me value for my show? When you have 44 viewers, you can't offer somebody who has 400,000 viewers, let's trade, you'll be on my show, I'll be on your show. You get laughed out of the room and people do that. That's not the way you're gonna win. That's not 5149. What you can offer is something in return. What you can offer is access because you're in those gyms with original content. So maybe you can be doing on location interviewing for that big UFC thing and then, you know, and for yourself too and then that person puts you on. You can offer money if you've got it. That's fine. I mean, whatever it is. So it's about distribution. So collaborations with other YouTube shows for sure. Social media through and through, creating enormous amounts of content. I've been spending even more time paying attention to how people are building organic following on Instagram and hashtag culture really works. For the people that are really patient, you know, and, and I have been flow with my hashtag work. Dunk, you do a good job with me on Musical.ly. You're like, this is the one that works. Like just, you know, I, I, I would even argue that I'm being lazy with my hashtag work in Instagram for sure, but for a lot of you, you have to go down that route. It really, really, really works. And then reverse engineering content creation. Let me explain. As we speak right now, I have a video going viral. It's called August. I made it so we could run it on August 1st. Producing content that you know has a chance of going somewhere based on when you make it. A Monday morning rant that you post on Monday morning. Making relevant content to what's going on in the world, either in pop culture, you know, your thoughts on what Miley Cyrus did on Wrecking Ball, or the Kanye and Taylor Swift, Kim and Con- you know, Taylor Swift fight, or, or the Olympics starting. Making content that's relevant, that gives it a little bit of legs for shareability, is very important from the content creation. Look, there's only two things, the content and distribution. Distribution. And so whether it's becoming a part of forums around UFC, I keep using hers, you know, like become a member of, of forums, become a member of Facebook groups. Most of you are not hustling distribution. You're focusing on the content and you think magically if you keep patient and you keep doing it, something's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. For four of you, all time, once, for four of you a year, something's gonna happen. That little motivational kid, right? The Jamaican trainer kid that went viral over the weekend? Somebody clearly posted that video and it started the process. It's great content. Like that's clearly content that's got a shot. But he's been putting out content for a little while. This is not his first rodeo. And so yes, it happens, right? Yes, it happens. But it's far more interesting for you to take control of your distribution through collaborations, through proper hashtag distribution on the Instagram world, from reaching out, biz deving, reaching out, being part of forums and other internet communities like Facebook groups to become part of that community so when you put out stuff people want to support you. I would tell you with Wine Library TV, I spent 20 minutes making the video and I spent five hours creating the distribution. 
Evan, thank you so much for having a couple seconds and being able to tell the Believe Nation a little bit about Empathy Wines. It means a lot to me that you would take this valuable real estate and, and time on your channel to give me some love. It means a lot. It's just good karma points and so you're just, you're awesome, thank you. Believe Nation, uh, if you're into wine at all, go to empathywines.com. My whole career's work was poured into producing a wine that rivaled 40 to $60 wine for 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, I'm just super excited about this subscription-based wine business. You can order three, six, or 12 bottles in subscription form, rosé, white, red. Um, if, you, if you search on Instagram or, or Twitter, you will be blown away. People are literally like, I don't even like Gary Vee, but the wine's good. Super proud of the effort. Thanks, Evan, for the time. Uh, wishing you guys all happy and healthy. If you want to know Gary Vee's views on essential tips for successful marketing, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.